I was on the streets of Colorado Springs one night witnessing, in fact, we have discipleship evangelism weekly outreaches every Wednesday night in Colorado Springs. And I was talking to a young man, probably 19, 20 years old, somewhere in there, and his name was Mike. And he really didn't want me to share with him the truths of Jesus Christ. And so finally I just asked him, I said, have you ever heard anything like this? And he said, yes, I had made a, some kind of profession of faith or something like that when I was in jail one time. But obviously, that one-time profession of faith wasn't bearing any fruit in his life at this time. And why is that true of so many people? Well, we're going to talk about the subject of repentance. And let me tell you, let me illustrate this by a little parable about Sally and Johnny. You see, Johnny's sitting in the church one day, and the preacher is really preaching. And he's, the preacher says, I know someone here today needs to be saved. And all of Johnny's friends, you know, point, says, it's Johnny, it's Johnny. And the preacher kept saying, there's someone here that needs to be saved. So eventually, they help Johnny, they escort him down the aisle. And Sally also went forward and said a little prayer. They, said a, they repeated a prayer after a preacher. And you know, Sally's life was transformed. But you know, Johnny's life never changed. They said the same prayer. They did what the pastor told them to do. And yet one person was transformed. Sally was transformed. And Johnny, his life never changed. Now why is that? It's because he bypassed the really teaching or what the Bible says about repentance. You see, the Bible says that repentance is not perfection. It's not like a New Year's resolution. It's not like you do everything right. Repentance means as a change of heart and that change of heart causes a person to move a totally new, complete, different direction. Now the reason they're moving a different direction is because they've had a change of heart. You see, Sally's heart was changed. She meant business when she talked to the living Christ, and Christ met her there. Johnny went through emotion, but his heart never changed. This is what repentance is. I'm going to quote from Acts chapter 26 and verse 18. It illustrates the message of the Apostle Paul. Jesus Christ gave him a commission what to preach. And this is what Jesus Christ, the resurrected Jesus Christ, told the Apostle Paul that he needed to preach. And I'm reading from Acts 26 verse 18. He said, I want you to open their eyes. See, the God of this world has blinded people's eyes. He's talking about his spiritual eyes. I want people's eyes to be opened. And then Jesus told him this, to turn people, to turn them from darkness to light, to turn them from the power or authority of Satan unto God, that they might receive the forgiveness of their sins. And as we read in Acts 26, Paul said, I wasn't disobedient to this heavenly vision. But I've went everywhere telling the Jews and the Gentiles, in verse 20, to repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by what they do. You see, when people change, there's a change in their life and they begin to move a different direction, that's the fruit of repentance. Repentance itself is the change of heart, the change of mind. And that change of heart, that change of mind, moves them a new direction. Repentance is not perfection. It's a new direction. And as the scripture tells us here, it's a turning. You can't turn to something until you turn from something. And in repentance, you're turning to God, to His grace, to His mercy, to His forgiveness, to His person. And you're turning at the same time away from Satan, His ways, His bondage, all of these kind of things to God. So, 
I don't know if you've gone through what I would call an artificial little prayer in which your life never changed. If that's you, you need to examine your heart. Did you really turn to God? Did you turn to Him completely and wholly and totally? Did you really turn to God? Did you really turn to His person? Did you really turn to His mercy? Did you really turn away from Satan, from sin, from that kind of thing? If you haven't, you need to turn to God, away from Satan, from darkness, and unto light. And even though there's a, an initial time that repentance takes place in the life of a believer, I believe that God is asking us, as even as Christians, to continue a life of repentance. You see, I need to make decisions today. And some of those decisions that I need to make today involve me turning away from the flesh, turning away from temptation, fleeing temptation, and turning to God in His ways. And so, repentance, even though it's a, an initial one-time act of the believer, it's an attitude because of the impartation of the new nature in the life of a Christian that causes that believer to constantly always want to turn to God and to His ways and away from the enemy and His ways. Always turning to light, away from darkness, to God and away from Satan. So if you've never had that change of heart, there's only one way to get it. And that is to ask God to give you a repentant heart a repentant attitude. For Acts 17.30 says this, God has commanded all men everywhere to repent.